Good morning, everyone. Good morning. God bless you. Please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, dear God, we come before you knowing that we are here by your grace. We are here because you have given us breath to breathe for every second of our life. We are here because you have gathered us here because you love us and you have a message for us. We are so grateful to be loved by you. Father, we, we pray that the way that you love us, we can love one another. And Father, we lift up this time to you. We pray that it will just delight your heart. That, that we can bring glory to your precious name. Father, you're so worthy. You're so full of goodness and love and kindness and wisdom and power. You are everything we need, dear God. We thank you, Father, that you have given us such a precious Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, that he died in our place to the Lord, but he's alive. He is alive, dear God. And we are so grateful that he prays for us each and every day. Father, you know the the that you know the concerns of each heart that is gathered here today. Father, help us to set aside those concerns and help us just to give them into your hands, dear Lord. And help us just to experience your presence and to and just to experience the joy that we have and, and the peace that we have by your presence within us. Father, we love you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Angela. I'm happy to be here with you this morning. I'm Tisa's friend, and um, I just feel in my spirit like um, just like exalting the Lord up above. And uh, we're going to get into some worship, but I just really want to, if you could just lift your eyes and your hands, um, we're just going to sing. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh, Lord. And we Sing that again, y'all. And 
There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we believe it. There is power in the name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And there's rising to 
your victory. Take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. And I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Hallelujah. And now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease, cause this is my victory, and now I can finally see it, you're teaching me how to receive it, so let all the striving cease, and this is my victory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you. Woo! Hallelujah! I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated. In the heavenly place, undefeated, with the one who has conquered it all. Crashing down, I have the authority. Jesus has given me when I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has. Confidence, 
I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who is God. And I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who is conquered i am seated sing this out in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered i am seated in the heavenly place undefeated by the one who is conquered it all you are my champion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for what you've done. Hallelujah. Jesus, we're here to worship you today, Lord. We're here to worship you today. You are the first place. You have the first place, Lord. To see you. You have it. You have it, Lord. There's just one Jesus. There's just one chief and two men's purpose. There's one main reason for existence. Oh, and all men's vain and high ambitions will one day be brought low. Will one day be brought low to treasure you? As idols that we've made For you alone will be exalted in that day And you'll be seen as rightful king And from our hearts we'll say Oh, we will say It all is for your glory, Jesus And all You would have the first place that in all things you would have preeminence. So put me anywhere, put your glory in me. I'll serve anywhere. Just let me see your beauty. God, put me anywhere. Put your glory in me, I'll serve anywhere. Just let me sing that again, y'all. Just put me anywhere. Put your glory in me, I'll serve anywhere. Just let me see your beauty one more time. Put me anywhere. God, put 
your glory in me. I'll serve anywhere. Just let me see your beauty. Just catch me up in your story. Oh, my love. For your glory. Catch me up in your story. Oh, my life. Oh, catch me up in your story. Oh, my life. For your glory. Catch me up in your story. Oh, my my God, my joy, God, you're my delight. My God, my joy, my delight. My God, my joy, you're my delight. My God, my joy. And all is for, and all is for your glory. We give it all to you today, God. All is for your, for the glory of your name, Lord. And all is for your glory. That in all things you would have the first place. That in all things you would have preeminence. And that in all things you would have the first place. And that in all things you would have preeminence. Oh Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every week we read the 21st Psalms to remind us that God is in control. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, <laughs> it's 121st Psalms. It says, I will lift up my eyes into the hills. For my son, my God, my help comes from the Lord, which gave heaven and earth. He wants to be the last one to be ruled. He that keepeth Israel must live beyond me. He that keepeth Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shame upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy
Good morning. <laughs> you know, if if I wonder if we really do understand that we have the authority that Jesus has given us authority. And what does that look like in our life? I know one thing it looks like is that when you pray in the name of Jesus, yes. your prayers are going to be answered. Yes. Amen. Yes. And as a body of Christ, we are we are should be praying for each other all the time. Yes. We, we all have issues going on, and um, so I I got the scripture this morning. It's one of my favorites. It's Psalm twenty-seven eight. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. <laughs> and do you, want, do you hear the heart part? We, we need to bring our heart to the Lord. We need to bring our whole being, our whole being, and bring it to him and, and pray to him. What an honor and privilege to be able to come to the Lord, the creator of the universe, our creator, savior, and redeemer. What an honor and a privilege that is to do. So that there were a few things that I wanted to bring to your attention since we're speaking about prayer. And that is one that um, uh, Pastor William is doing a funeral today for one of his very, very dear friends. And though we know it's a celebration of life, it's always hard to say goodbye, and it's and it's hard when you're trying to be with all the loved ones that are mourning and grieving. So um, let's keep him in prayer also that he suffers so much with his sciatica pain, and it's, it's very painful. So let us lift up our brother in prayer. Um, and our other pastor, Pardue, has asked for prayers, um, and I don't know all the details, but God does. So when one of our brothers or sisters asks for prayer, we need to be by their side and pray. Things are, things are not always joyful. We, have, we get the good and the bad all the time. And we need to stand by each other in those good times and in those bad times, Amen. even though we'd like to be happy all the time. We need to be able to stand with our brothers and sisters that are grieving or struggling and, um, and try to help them. So... Um, so he keep him in prayer too. I know that each each of us has prayers. So I wanted to tell you that if you have something that's really grieving your heart, bring it to to uh, us and the pastoral team. When we meet, we can pray and we keep we can keep you in those prayers. Or give us a call, and and we will, we are very glad to do that for you. Amen. 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 Yeah, you know. One thing that I uh, really want to, to emphasize that uh, we're not going through this alone. That's right. You know, we're not going through these times alone. And, um, you know, the, the whole concept of, of having the body of Christ, of uh, having different uh, parts, one body, is that we need each other. The different parts need each other. So, yes. so, Amen. so yeah, it gets, go ahead, go ahead and praise him. Thank you for knowing that, that, that that's not only the way he made us, but that that's the way that we flourish. Um, yes. not, not only as individuals, but as the body of Christ and showing the true image of God, that God uh, being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit fully together, that brings us and uh, together when we're falling apart. Amen. <laughs> you know, so. you know and, and when we pray, did I interrupt you? No? That's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I have to say it before I forget it. Yeah, it's okay. That's how I am too. <laughs> Do it. Do it, please. There's another psalm that, well, when we pray, we need to come with with praise and thanksgiving. We can't just jump in and give them a to-do list. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we have big to-do lists, but we need to reverence him and praise him for who he is and, and, and show him our love and our thanksgiving. But also, not only do we present our request to him, we need to be still. Be still in prayer. And listen, because it, the, there's another psalm that says, be still and know that I'm God. What does that mean? That means that God is our defender. He is fighting our battles. Amen? That means that you and I don't need to worry about all of our difficulties, our diseases, all of our other things. Because 
when we're still, we realize that he's the one that's in control. We are not in control. We do not have the wisdom we need. He has the wisdom we need. We don't have anything without him. So when we're still, we can listen to his voice. When we're so busy talking sometimes, we don't hear the other person. And I think he has something more important to say to us than we have to him. Amen. 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 The sermon before the sermon. Don't you love coming to Promised Land Ministries? <laughs> you get a full plate, full plate. But when you leave, you bet if you're if you're still hungry when you leave, I don't know what to tell you, but <laughs> the smorgasbord. Um, but but yeah, so you know, one body, many parts. So definitely uh not only lift each other up like the prayer concerns we just heard, but but know that you can come up, you know, to us anytime. So like after church, sometimes, you know, I, I, I've, I've been rightly uh, checked for uh, having a holy huddle with with like my fellow pastors and stuff. But um, the we are here for you. So if, if the Lord has touched you during the service, come up, get prayer. You know, if you if you have a praise report, like like she just said, give it. You know, uh, God, God not only deserves the praise, but when we praise him and when we thank him, we are so focused on him that we are able to fully receive what he has for us. And a lot of times the prayer is, is, is answered in that. It is being answered in that, his presence um, and his peace. And through that flows his power for us to then be able to do the things that, uh, that need to be done um, for each other and, and for ourselves. Sometimes it's hard for me to pray because I feel very unlovable. I feel very unacceptable, undeserving. So we must not lose sight of the love that God has for us. Do not lose sight of it. He sent his son to die and raise for you because of his love for you so that you can go to the throne of grace and you can pray. Do not forget how treasured you are in the heart of God. Amen. Amen. Man, so, so do we have any other announcements? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had a we had a great food giveaway last week. I thank everybody that helped. I learned a little Spanish. I, I'm gonna share it. Sister Mirna's going, oh no. <laughs> Dios te bendiga. Dios te bendiga. God bless you. And I had about six people <clears throat> telling me the syllables and making me say it over and over, but mostly say it faster. <laughs> and I and I and it's a tongue twister, so I haven't got it down yet. But they got the message, and it was beautiful. I, I absolutely love it. I love the people that come. I love that God gives us the ability to give. And that we can make life a little bit easier for other. I look forward to certain friends coming every week. And um, and God blesses me, I think, more than we bless other people. Do you know what I mean? It's just kind of a paradox in the kingdom of God. So we're, we're going to, um, we're getting ready to go into uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day. And I know it's a ways away, but we have to think about things in advance. Not that you have to think about all those things so much, but it's coming up. Yeah. And the fireworks booth, we have to think about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of opportunities to jump in and, and, and help uh, with what the needs of uh, the community and the church are. Um, and so with that in mind, you know, we want to make sure that we do uh, prepare, uh, that we stay in a, a state of readiness, a state of preparedness, yes. like like what, you know, looking for opportunities like, OK, hey, what uh, what what's going on here? How can we better reach uh, not only the people here in the church, but how can we better reach the community? How can people come into a, a right relationship with God where uh, wounds are healed, where needs are met, where purpose is fulfilled? Um, you know, so, um, you know, when we announce these things, we're not just trying to figure out a way to make service last longer. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're we're trying to really, you know, help help you understand like you got a place. Here you have a place in God's kingdom, and so uh, let's get ready for that. Yes, and and I love working alongside each and every one of you. Not not only does God love you, but I love you, sincerely, sincerely love you, 
and care about everything in your life. And I know it's not Christmas yet, but <laughs> but um, Sister Valerie has had a vision. And so I took off with it. Me and Mir Sister Myrna took off with it, and we bought 350 stockings. And they were plain. So Sister Myrna has been painting them. Oh, cool. <laughs> in, her, in her spare time. And I think we're going to have to have a fundraiser to, to fill 350 stockings. But I, I just wanted to bring attention to Sister Myrna, how she works in the background and how we are preparing for these things in advance because we do want to bless the community. We want to bless the children. So keep it in mind. And, and uh, if you have a little few extra bucks, uh, buy a toy. Okay? Mm -hmm. And, and if you've got ideas, don't be afraid to do like what Myrna did. So uh, your ideas, when God downloads, downloads them to you, it's not just for you, it's for, for others. That's for, for other people. For, yeah, for the church. So. so we have Bible study on Wednesday night. And men's huddle is coming. Don't forget that men's huddle is always the first Saturday of every month. Our tithing box, most of you know, is over there. We don't pass a basket. I think that Whatever we can give to God in there, no matter whether it's big or small, we're back to the heart again. If you're giving from the heart to God, he knows it because he knows everything about our hearts. So whether it's little or big or, or you don't have anything to give today monetarily wise, I know that you are, are helping a lot uh, with us, with, with our community work. So... Do you want to pray over this? Sure. Time? Let's go ahead and pray. Let's pray over it. Lord, we thank you that, that one of the things that we can do to recognize your love for us and your blessing us is to return at least a, a small portion of that to you, God. Uh, that you are able to take that little and make it much, Lord. Especially when we combine all the littles together. They come together and they make much uh, in you. And you're able to multiply it like you did the loaves and the fishes, God. And so, Lord, we ask that you would have that, uh, that you would help us to have that heart, God, to be part of the miracles that are being done every day, to see the miracles that are being done every day, and to, and to, and to, and to yearn for more op opportunities to be part of that. And right now, that is in, uh, our ability to be able to give what you've entrusted to us, Lord. And so, God, whatever that is, whatever that uh, level of sacrifice is that you've called us to, whatever uh, we're able to do to, uh, to be part of that miracle, God, help us to do it right now. Help us to have the faith and the obedience to do it, God. And, and as we are, can be trusted with little, Lord, we pray that you will uh, entrust more to us, God, that you will pour out your blessings, God, that you would help us to, to not only uh, be faithful with what we have, God, but be prepared for what you're about to bless us with and, and, and be more of a blessing to others uh, through that, God. So we ask that you, whatever is being given right now, that you would bless it, that you would multiply it, that you would bring forth a harvest of righteousness and justice, of perfect love, of truth and grace, God, uh, that your kingdom would not only be strengthened here in this church, but would be expanded out into this community, God, that people would uh, come to know you as the one who seeks and to save those who are lost. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we, can we stop for a moment and pray for our pastors, too? Yes, let's do that. Lord God, we thank you for um, all the pastors here, but uh, especially we want, we want to lift up to you, uh, Pastor William, um, uh, Pastor Laws, who's, who's going through uh, the loss of a friend and, and, and leading others through that grieving process and that loss, Lord. And uh, Lord, even though that uh, to be absent from the body is to be present for the Lord to those who trust you, God, we know that there's still on this side of eternity it's hard to let go sometimes. So we pray, Lord, that you would help the people who are involved in that situation to be able to uh, uh, to thank you and to praise you for the blessing that that person has been and, and will continue to be, that their let the blessing will live on, uh, that the seeds that they had sown will, would not end with uh, their life here on earth, God, but that it would go forth into the generations that follow. And and uh, we ask for his healing as well, God, the healing uh, of the of the. The, the sciatic nerve uh, condition, whether that means uh, bringing his back and in, into proper alignment and, and whatever other health uh, situation is going on there, God, that you would help him to come into the fullness of who you've created him to be, God. We lift up to you, uh, Pastor Pardue, 
And thank you for his oversight here and being a pastor of pastors, God. Each one of us totally uh, depends on on uh, him, God. And so we just uh, we, we depend on him to the, to the extent that you want us to, Lord. Ultimately, our dependence is on you, God. But we thank you that you, you do give us people that we can look to here as representatives of your authority and of your love, God. And so uh, we just lift him up to you right now and that you, that you would speak a word. Uh, Lord, just just as the centurion knew the power that you had to be able to speak a word and something happened from a distance, Lord, we pray right now and we trust you, Lord, that you would just speak a word right now over uh, uh, Pastor Pardue and that, that, that whatever that situation is, it is resolved in Jesus' name, that, that he will be back with us in short time, God, and that anybody who is not here for any kind of crisis that's going on in their life, God, we lift them up to you as well right now. We thank you for who's here, God, for who had the grace to get here, Lord, thank you that, and bless them today, God. But for those who are not here, we look forward to seeing them in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. is a disciple. And is it possible to be a Christian without being one? You might not know it, but you are a disciple. It's just a matter of who you're a disciple of. Each one of us is modeling our lives after someone. So who do you follow? What do you listen to? What vision of the good life is capturing your heart? There's no shortage of roads to destruction. But there is one that leads to eternal life. Jesus is calling you down this path, saying, follow me. To be his disciple means to be an apprentice of Jesus, to model your life after him, to be like him. No matter who you are, where you live, what you do, you can live like Jesus, shining his light to your family, to your community, and your life. Discipleship is how his kingdom comes. It's how his will is done here as it is in him. But it requires a decision. Will you follow him? Will you learn from him? Will you let him guide your life, your whole life, to be shaped in his image? Are you trying to be a Christian without being a disciple? The question and the invitation is right in front of you. Are you a disciple? I 
not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause I'm part of the mountain. Is the God of the valley, and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. It's a morning today. Give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. Lord, we believe it. You turn bones into armies. Hallelujah. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can.
life as a disciple. Life as a disciple. What does it look like? Are you a disciple? Are there still disciples on earth? Father in heaven, we've come once again, O oh God, into the holy place. The place that has been consecrated and set aside to bring glory to your name. So now, Lord, as we come, Lord, I'm calling on your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle them in the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. Oh God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit that we shall be truly wise and rejoice in your constitution. I believe, Lord, that you are here with us. Although my eyes doesn't see you, my faith senses that your presence is here. Make me understand, oh God, the truth that you wish to teach me in this meditation. Lord, let me make up my mind to put it into practice. You speak now, your servant is listening. Speak to my soul, O oh Lord. I'll give you the thanks as we give you thanks, Lord God Almighty, for all the benefits you have given us. And to you be the glory. To you be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Um, Pastor Claudia alluded to the fact that the authority that we have in prayer and the change that comes as a result of the fervent prayer. That is, the one who trusts and believes. You see, for the unbeliever, there's no prayer to be answered. James makes it clear that the double-minded man or woman is unstable in all his ways. But for you and I to be stable in our faith, that is to make sure that our election, our confession is sure that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Are you a disciple? Do you live as a, a disciple, life as a disciple. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to a rather familiar passage. In the writing of Luke, Luke chapter nine and a few verses here. Verse 23, it says, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it? For someone to gain the whole world and yet lose 
or forfeit their very soul or self. You know, for me, it was always interesting in this particular text. What made it interesting is the fact that where it came in Luke's writing. If you know anything about this particular text, you'll realize that this actually came right after Jesus began to make the prediction of his death, burial crucifixion, resurrection. I believe for most of us, when we hear the word disciple, we probably immediately think of the 12 who followed Jesus during his ministry on earth. Uh, many people don't realize that Jesus still has disciples in this day and age. You see, while every disciple is a believer, not every believer is a necessarily a disciple. Help me, Lord. A disciple is one who, who, who has made a wholehearted commitment to follow Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. In one sense, you might, you might call this discipleship radical Christian living. Uh, when you truly make a commitment to, uh, to Christ as a disciple, you will be living the Christian life as it was meant to be lived. John 10 and 10 says that he has come that you and I may have life and have it more abundantly. But are we living in the abundant life? Are you living as a disciple? Anything short of discipleship is settling for something less than what God has desired for you and me. For God so loved the world that he gave, that he sent his only son into the world with purpose. The scripture says and gives us some of the insight on the responsibility and the commitment of a disciple. A disciple takes up his or her cross and follow Christ. Choosing to be a disciple of Jesus Christ takes more than just verbal affirmation. It takes daily sacrifice and commitment. You see, when you follow Christ, brothers and sisters, when you follow Christ's guideline, you will find that, uh, that the end result is far better than what you and I can ever muster up or ever imagine. Your, your desire must be to... Uh, put yourself down and help let him lift you up when we lay at the feet of the cross transformation come place your desire must take a back seat in other words so that his desire and his will will be done in your life and in my life you see being a disciple means recognizing that God's plan for your life is ultimately better than the plan that you can come up with. That may mean making some sacrifice in your life, such as spending more of your time in God's word. Help me, Lord. In relinquishing your plans, relinquishing my plans, and then you will find yourself in a closer walk with the Lord. You see, you must, you must take up your cross daily, the text says. Daily. Not, not, not just on Sunday or, or on Wednesday during Bible study. But you must take up your cross daily. Jesus is not simply uh, referring to a religious symbol. What he's referring to is something far more than that. During this time in history, anyone seen carrying a cross was headed to a place for a horrible death. Help me, Lord. 
And today some have misunderstood this statement by Jesus to mean that your cross is your personal inconvenience or problem. Uh, in this passage, however, Jesus is, is talking about an act of dying to yourself. In essence, he wants you to lay yourself at the feet of the cross. And when you lay yourself at the feet of the cross, then and only then, you and I, I can say, I want your will more than my will. Even as our Lord speaks out of the Garden of Gethsemane, and he knows what's ahead of him, but he says, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. You see, this, 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 this idea and this ability to be able to take up your cross, as it says here, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. You see, once you have taken up your cross, you will experience the abundant life that Jesus promised to those who follow him. You must lose yourself to save yourself. Verse 24 here in the text, it may sound rather uh, as a contradiction when you first read it. But yet, if you truly want to find happiness and fulfillment, you must relinquish full control of your life to Jesus Christ. Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He knows our arrival and our departure. Oh, help me, Lord. Paul wrote, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. You see, taking up the cross is more than a burden to the disciple. It's not a burden. It's like a bird who flies. Imagine the wings of a bird being a burden. I don't think we'll see too many birds flying, right? <laughs> They spend most of the time just perched on a tree or maybe sitting on the ground. Don't want to be bothered today. These wings just think it's just a burden for me. Taking up your cross. It shouldn't be a burden to you. A disciple counts the cost. Anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciples. Recorded in Luke 14 and verse 27. At the time Jesus said the words, he had become quite popular in the culture there. Crowds flocked around him, and, and whenever he, wherever he went, folks showed up. But not always for the right reason. There are people who come to church and not always for the right reason. Consequently, Jesus directed these solemn and searching words to those people who followed him for selfish purpose or because it was the popular thing to do. They wanted to fit in. You know, likewise, Jesus does not want you to follow him only when it is convenient or socially acceptable. He, he wants you, brothers and sisters, to, he wants you to be his disciple for the long haul, regardless of how easy or how difficult it might be. That's the reason why it says here, you must take up your cross daily. And that's the reason why it says here, at verse 24, that seems like it's almost a, a contradiction. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life, he says, for my sake. These are the ones who are victorious. What does it mean to count the cost? Do you love Jesus more than anyone or anything else in your life? The praise team was singing a song and it had to do with Jesus being first on the heart. Oh, help. Do you love Jesus? and desire his will for your life over your own will? Are you willing to accept ridicule and, and, and sacrifice for the cause of Christ? Will you commit 
to follow Jesus, even when it isn't popular or expedient. Brothers and sisters, we are living in a world where popularity seems to fit the social media. As if everybody is looking for their 15 seconds of fame. But if you have carefully examined your heart, counted the cause, and can truly answer yes to these questions, then you are on the road to a, a long-lasting discipleship, friendship with Jesus Christ. We are created to serve, to worship. And we are created to serve and worship the true and the living God. Jesus Christ is not looking for half-hearted followers. He wants wholehearted commitment and followers. That's what it means by counting the cost, by picking up your cross daily. You see, when you do this, you come to a place realizing that one of the things that a, a disciple does, a disciple abides in Christ. John teaches us in his gospel in John chapter 15, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine, and neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Are you in Christ, and is Christ in you? Are you still attached to the vine? Is there evidence of your fruit bearing? Are you lacking in, in, in fertilization? Do you need more? watering. Jesus knows that his true followers desire to live productive, fulfilling, and joyful lives. In this passage, he says, and he lays out four characteristics of growing the disciple. You see, As he walked on the sea of Galilee and began to call disciples, those men were fishermen. They were familiar with baiting a hook, casting the line, and enticing something that was in the water, fish. They knew how to lure the fish, in other words. And so Jesus has come. The word has come according to John and dwell among us. And it is, this word is the word, is the seed that is being spread. It is that word, which is Christ Jesus, that is to lower others into the family of God. When he called the disciples, he says, come, and I will make you fishes of men. They understood how to catch food to eat. But God was concerned about soul for salvation. Oh, help me, Lord. Are you living as a disciple today? Life as a disciple. A disciple stays close to the master. Jesus encouraged us to remain in him. Another translation is to abide in him. The word abide signifies a, a permanent position. Our relationship with Christ is not a temporary thing, brothers and sisters. And it's not based on what time of the day it is or what day of the week it is. It means that, that you let your roots grow deep into the relationship with Jesus, allowing him to, to fill every part of your life and every day. If you remain in him, this happens. You begin to grow. If you maintain this unbroken 
relationship with God, your lifestyle will change. A disciple is fruitful, just as a branch can only uh, be fruitful when attached to the divine. We can only be productive when we, when, we, when we draw out of the strength that comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible describes this fruit as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Yes, these are the fruit of the Spirit that comes out of Galatians chapter 5, more specifically verses 22 through 23. Are you a disciple? Are you walking in the way as it is recorded in Acts? Disciples obey the Master. Another clear sign that you are Christ's disciple is your obedience to the principles and the guidelines found in the Bible. Wow. It's so interesting that when we get a job, one of the things that we get, most of us, we get a handbook. It tells us about a benefit. And it also lets us know what the guidelines is for what is expected of us on the job. God is not the author of confusion. And he's not slack in his promises, as men think he may be. Only then will you discover what it means to live in God's love. When you walk in this obedience, a disciple loves others. It is the love that we have one for another, that the world will know that you are my disciples. These are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus gave us the ultimate example of love by laying down his life for us. He, in essence, is asking us to do nothing less. Is the servant greater than his master? Are you living as a disciple? You see, life as a disciple, it changes everything. It comes with a commitment that, that is wholehearted. In verse 11, we find Jesus reasoning for sharing these principles. He wants us to be filled with joy. I don't know about you, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. I said the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me just, let me break that down for you. There are some time I don't feel joyful. But because of abiding in him, the joy of the Lord become, a, become my strength. There are some days you don't want to get up. But because the joy of the Lord is your strength, guess what? You can get up. Because you're not getting up in your own strength. A disciple walks as Jesus walked. How does she walk? If you call yourself a disciple... You need to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Live your life as Jesus did. Another translation says that you should walk as he walked. There's something about walking um, that's very basic. A walking implies a steady motion. You know, you put one foot in front of the other. As a result of walking, your position changes. So the direction in which you're walking in is critical. 
Because your position can change and you could be headed to hell or your position can change and you can be headed to heaven. Again, walking requires a steady motion. Therefore, it's important that we don't never find ourselves in a position that we're just always standing still. More than likely, if we are, then we, we're moving backwards. <laughs> you put one foot in front of the other and you keep moving. That is the way we should follow Christ. We need to stick with it and be consistent. How do you practically live as Christ did. It's the implication. It's the practical implication. It's not far as difficult as you think. Make time for God and his word every day. Maybe you should be writing these down. Spend time in prayer with the Lord throughout the day. Take time to be with God's people. Basic, simple, practical steps. Walking in the way. Walking with God. Walking in the spirit. That's the motion moving forward, brothers and sisters. That's the motion moving forward forward. Today I hope I can press you in a way that your motion will be a motion moving forward because you got the understanding and you have a practical means by which to walk. To walk like Jesus did. He always made time for God the Father. He always spent time in prayer. And he cared about other people. That's the reason why he got a disciples in the first place. Because what he had, what he brought from heaven, what he brought from the Father, he needed to share it with others. Are you sharing your faith with others? What God has blessed you with, are you sharing it with others? <laughs> Because if you are, then two things is happening. You are walking in the way. And because you are doing that and sharing what you have received, you are making disciples. Are you ready to make disciples? Are you ready to walk in the way? I, I want you to stand to your feet. There is a tremendous benefit to the to a disciple who stays close to Christ. By walking as he walked, the Bible tells us we will have help to keep us from sinning. You can read more about that in 1 John chapter 3, verse 6. For that reason, one of the greatest identifying marks of a disciple is that his or her walk resembles the master's walk. As you're standing there with your hearts towards heaven, I want you to imagine walking, walking beside your Lord, my Lord, our Lord. And as you walk beside him, feel the spirit, feel the love and feel the peace. Know his presence and be in his presence. Father in heaven, Fill now this room with your presence, O oh God. 
O oh God, enable us to cast all our cares upon you now. Take captive our thoughts. Allow us to lay aside every weight that so easily entangle us, that so easily beset us. Let us breathe now. Let us breathe. Thank you, O oh God, for the breath of life. We are walking with you now, Lord. We've made up our mind. We're asking now for your will to be done. Today, we relinquish self so that we may live eternally, even now. Again, come Holy Spirit and fill our hearts. Come Holy Spirit, renew our mind. Do it for your name's sake, Lord. Yeah. We'll give you the honor and the glory. We'll thank you for the success in our lives. Let Christ be lifted up now. Father in heaven, draw all men, women and boys and girls unto yourself. You are lifted up. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Everything that's not like him has to flee at his name. Jesus. Sometimes that's, not, that's the only name you need to call on to, to clean your house. You don't need no soap or no water, just Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your cleansing in our minds, in our hearts, in our bodies. And we thank you for the restoration that comes in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people says, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, praise. Trust and pray that you can take away something from today's lesson that will encourage your walk. That you would desire more of him. That he will increase in your life. And as you press your way, one foot in front of another, step by step, forward motion, that people will see more of him in you and less of you. God bless you all. God bless you. You may go in peace.